Insights brought to you by the National Referral Network. And this is where we we share professional wisdom, insights, information, all that good stuff with all of you so we can all learn something. And today we're going to be talking with Rob Jacobs and talk specifically about what is known, what are known as cash balance plans. This is, uh, first of all, Rob, thanks for, for giving us a couple of minutes. Um, a cash balance plan is for people who want to put money into a retirement plan, but want to put more money away. It, 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 it's essentially, how do we, if I'm making a lot of money, how do I avoid taxes? Is that basically what we're talking about here today? Exactly. Cash balance plans are primarily intended to help business owners or other, you know, high, high earning, um, you know, partners in the company save taxes. They have a number of other benefits. Um, you, you can invest them. They have some, some guaranteed income. You can use them to recruit and retain employees. So lots of benefits similar to what a 401k would be, but, but the, but the primary huge differentiator is you can put away significantly more. And so you can save significantly more in taxes. Gotcha. So let's zoom out for a minute. Okay. So yep. when it comes to retirement plans uh, in the workplace, there are several. There's uh, a simple IRA requires no plan administration. And I believe the limit on a simple, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's 12,000 a year, if I'm not mistaken. It is. It's quite a bit lower than a 401k. It's quite a bit lower. It's 12,000 a year. 401k, I think now it's up to 18,000, I think. Um, Even higher, actually. Yeah. Um, if you're over 50, you can actually put away 30. Well, if you're over 50, yeah, you can put away, I think, 27, right. something like that. So. So there's 401k, there's simple IRA, there's a SEP, you know, which is called Simplified Employee Pension. Uh, you can put away 54,000, I believe, but you, whatever percentage of that, of your income that represents, you got to do it for your employees. If which you have tough. employees. It's tough. So, <laughs> yeah, you got these different boilerplate plans you can use. Uh, and some of us are familiar with what these are. Um, but when you talk about a cash balance plan, that's really a, a companion. It's, it's an overlay, okay? It's something that goes along with that other stuff. Uh, oh, by the way, there's also profit sharing plans. I guess what a lot of people don't know is, is that 401k and profit sharing plans are kind of the same thing, okay? A 401k is a version of a profit sharing plan. Um, but these are all things, again, we're familiar with. But a cash balance plan is something you can overlay if, if you want to defer more money, okay? And as you mentioned, um, it's available to those employers who are in higher tax brackets and can also be used to retain employees who are oh, most favored, most valuable. And I think if I'm not mistaken, you can exclude certain classes of employees as well. Is that correct? Well, not only, not only can you exclude certain classes, you can exclude large numbers of people. So in a 401k plan, you have to include virtually everybody. There are a few people you don't have to include non-resident aliens and union employees and some things, but in general, 401ks include everybody. With a cash balance plan, you only have to include 40% of your of your entire um, you know, uh, employee class, and, and, and that includes partners. So if you've got a law firm that has you know, 10, 10 partners and you know, 20 or 30 support staff, you can include just the partners and no support staff. I mean, th there are a lot of pretty cool things you can do. So the so whereas in a regular retirement plan, you have to figure out how to do it for everybody, okay? Because it's everybody or nobody is kind of the rule if you get all this tax, get all this tax yeah. deferral stuff. Um, the cash balance planning say, oh, okay, I'm going to just include these people, but not these people, right? You can pick and choose and, and you can do it for lots of reasons. You can do it to pay the least out, you can do it to reward current employees. You can do it to recruit people. There are lots of things you can do, but yeah, you're exactly right. You, you can really pick and choose in ways that are not allowed in a 401k. So the, walk us through exactly how this works. Like someone, let's say somebody has a 401k already and and, and, and business owners saying, I'm, I'm making money, I'm getting clobbered in taxes, but there's really only five or six people, five or six or eight people who really are the key people in the company. Can I do something for those people at the exclusion of everybody else? And can it be significant enough to make it worth it? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it, like I said, it really works in the situation where someone's, you know, where a business owner or other partners are, are in pretty high tax brackets 
and they're also putting in significant cash or want to be put, putting significant cash into their 401k. So if they're already maxing that out or they should be maxing that out, then you, like you say, you overlay a cash balance plan on top of that and use those two plans together. So what, what you can do then is, is you can put the maximum into the 401k and then you can put away really big chunks into the cash balance plan. And, and by big chunks, Mike, I mean, if someone's in their mid fifties, you can put away north of 300,000 and, and, and you put 300,000 away into these, these combined plans, you're then saving 140,000, give or take, if you're in the highest tax bracket. So, so the savings are incredible. So these are really large deferrals. So does it, is it a flat amount or does it operate as so many plans do according to some sort of formula regarding the amount you can put in? So the way it's, it's different than what people are, are used to with a 401k where there is a, a specific number you put in. The way it works is um, an actuary does some pretty complex calculations each year to determine based on how much how much money's in the account, based on how much it grew last year, based on how much money the partners made, based on how old they are. An actuary is going to say, OK, you can put in this year between this contribution and this contribution and, and, and then each partner can put that much money in. So there, there's a band in which you can contribute money based on those calculations and they rerun those calculations each year based on those factors I, I talked about. Do, do they have to put the same amount of money in every year or does the actuary say, oh, you can put in up to 300,000. Do they have to put 300,000 in or can they put in 50? Um, there are, there are ranges in which you have to put in money and, and if there are business reasons to put in less, I mean, if, if COVID happens and the business kind of gets crushed for a year or two, there are reasons you could put in less, but in general, this, a cash balance plan isn't for a company who expects to have a windfall for one or two years and then back to normal business. It, it's really intended to be a longer term plan though long-term really is only about three years. So if you can put in pretty consistent money for about three years, that's gonna work. But if you, if you wanna drop in 400,000 one year and then nothing for several years, that's probably not a good plan. So you have some variability, um, but in general, you wanna be consistent where possible. Okay. And you, you, you mentioned you can exclude 60% or so of the employee population. Is right. that- of pretty are those limits pretty well defined or yes you know uh, let's say you have 30 employees does that mean you have to put in money for at least 12 of them yeah so so what what a common scenario you'll have you know so let's say three partners 30 employees right so um you, you have to cover 12. so three of the 12 are the three partners right mm -hmm. a b and c that's easy so you have nine other people and a very common way to set it up would be, okay, we, we would like to reward these two key employees. So we're going to, we're going to put them in the plan because, you know, we're, we're trying to get them to stay for as long as possible. We then have, you know, seven others we have to cover. So you're going to go look at the, at the employee census, which is, you know, ages and salaries, things like that. You're going to pick out maybe the seven who, whose combination of of young age and low salary means their contribution is very small. And so you might be able to put in, you know, a quarter million for each of the three partners and you might spread five or 6,000 among the other seven employees. So it, it, it's a pretty incredible ratio. You can put in massive amounts for the ones you want to put a lot in and then put in just a few thousand dollars in many cases for the ones you, you have to have in the plan legally but you're not trying to give extra money to. Okay, so you can, a common situation. So you can you can weight the contributions towards the people that matter the most, meaning the usually owners, partners, people like that, and key employees. Yep. And then and then to meet your forty percent, you'll often give the people who are going to get the least from that plan because of salary and age. Okay. What about uh, vesting, things like that, where let, let's say you've got you're putting in money for a key employee because um, you want to retain that employee, but then they get poached by a competitor. 
what happens to that con what, what happens to the money you contributed um that money is theirs so the money the money that goes in is 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 their money but if they don't um you know if, if they don't stay after after the, so typically you have to work a thousand hours in a year mm -hmm. to qualify for the benefits in that year but mm -hmm. once they work that thousand hours in that year they qualify for that benefit in that year so okay there's but a you're benefit per se it, it's different than 401k vesting but there is a, a vesting per se they're they're okay so it's different so uh, but it does mean that if you put in say i don't know ten thousand for a key employee in a given year and the next year that employee decides to leave all ten thousand goes with them yeah okay so that is, all right so it's important for employers to understand that that there are some of those limitations um, right so you, you pro does that mean you probably do want to be very careful about who you do give this benefit to yeah certainly i mean it's certainly something that that it is meant as a as a tool to like you said save taxes for the business owners but also re retain employees and so certainly you want to do that in a way that that you know helps them understand this is a benefit we're giving but but it's a benefit that is not typically given in one year it's a benefit that's given over the course of of a significant amount of time and so there there is a vesting in the sense that you don't earn you, you only earn the money each year. And so if you want to keep getting that money, you, you have to keep working there. So in that sense, there is a, a, a vesting um, enabled. And uh, I guess as we wrap up here, I, uh, I've i known about cash balance plans for a long time. I just very seldom see them uh, right. because they, as you alluded to earlier, uh, are typically used by companies that are extremely profitable uh, they're going to stay profitable and they're looking to defer more money and not pay as much in taxes. Uh, however, just because I don't see them a lot doesn't mean they're not out there. It, are they growing and are cash balance plans growing in popularity? Great question, Mike. They're actually growing about twice as fast as 401k plans are. Wow. Okay. Um, so they are, the, the, the growth is, is accelerating primarily for a few reasons. I think the, the, probably the two main reasons would be that um tax rates are both going up and expect to go up and we're, we're spending quite a bit of money as a government and, and that money typically means higher tax rates so some of the tax changes are sunsetting in a few years so because of that um, that's one reason another reason is covid and some you know a difficult you know economic situation have helped a lot of business owners realize they don't have a lot saved they, they really don't have a lot to weather a difficult storm and so a lot of business owners are, are, are looking and saying, okay, I need to diversify. I need to put things in more than just my one business. And so a, a lot of business owners are starting these plans to, to save for the higher taxes and prepare for the future mm -hmm. in, in a plan that is separate from their company. What, one of the cool things about these plans is you, when you leave your company, you can actually roll the plan, um, your, your assets in the plan, you can roll that into an IRA which okay. is incredible. So it, it's a really cool deal that you can take the money and it's, it's your money. It's separate, which is pretty amazing. Okay. Well, I, uh, Rob, we really appreciate you giving us a few minutes and, and, and breaking all this down. I, I, I think this is something that a lot of employers just and a lot of business owners simply don't know about. Um, Absolutely. And it could do well to, to learn more about it. If you, and, um, uh, this, of course, is brought to you by the National Referral Network, and and part of the reason we do this this broad, this broadcast is because we have different professionals of different persuasions talking about all kinds of things, and we're just here learning and trying to you know, benefit each other in, in, in doing that. And so we really appreciate it. If you want to know more about the National Referral Network, uh, as we sign off here, I'm waiting for the thing to come up here. If the thing, yeah, the thing just came up. There you go. <laughs> you can check us out at nrnamerica.com, uh, and you'll be glad you did. We're always looking to add professionals who have all kinds of different insights. And with that, uh, again, thank you, Rob, and we will see you all next week. Appreciate it, Mike. Thank you.